episode of All Things Black and White with your girl Tamar Braxton and JR. Yes, we're so excited to bring you another amazing episode. First of all, we wanted to extend our gratitude to everyone for tuning in every single week, liking and subscribing to our new page. We absolutely love bringing you new content every week, opening up our lives, opening up our thoughts and conversations with you guys. So make sure you like and subscribe. Okay. You okay. Ready for the topics? Baby, listen, let me tell you something. My man, my man, my man, my man, my man, my man, my man is very excited. <laughs> no, I wouldn't yes, say excited. Yes, he's excited about this excited. one because, listen, sometimes, sometimes I'll have to like, babe, what do you want to talk about, babe? And my baby came and he was like, baby, this is what we're talking about today. <laughs> and I'm here for it. I'm here for him and I'm here for <laughs> I and the T. Okay. First of all, let's do a little bit of recap of what's been going on in our world. Okay, sure. Well, you know, we just celebrated the 4th of July with our kids and that was amazing. we had the most amazing 4th of July after party. Um, after um, we went and performed for the city of Stockbridge. And I feel like the entire city came out. It, sure did. it was amazing. It was all love. It was beautiful. Um, my sister came in support. My mom came. Um, our children were here, and we had some amazing barbecue. First of all, I don't know if anybody know. I don't even know if you know this. You like no like my one of my favorite food is barbecue. I do know that. You do know that. I know that now. By now. Yes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm doing things for I had to. <laughs> A barbecue hot dog. So shout out to my own girl Mona and Hattie Marie Barbecue who came mm. and catered and shut it down. It was so good. Like you know, you, you set a party off when the food is amazing. For sure. Right? That gets the whole party started. You got good drinks, you got good food, then you get good vibes. That's right. Yes, That's right. and we did just that. Um so shout out to all our friends who stopped by uh the concert and our party. Um, shout out to Hattie, like I said, and also shout out to you guys for um, tuning in. You know, because you know, we never really opened up our parties like that to you guys. And that's right. Yeah, well, at that's one right. point we were live, and he did his ghetto fireworks that is not online. The reason why it's not online because I got banned from TikTok <laughs> for going live. I didn't even know. Um, but yeah, they weren't ghetto fireworks. They were, it was an amazing fireworks show. We had a little, uh, we were scared. We had a little technical difficulties, <laughs> but I'm, I'm here to tell you, people love the fireworks show. Our finale uh, turned out well. Nobody was injured. No, nope, thank God, yeah. thank God. But it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. So let's hop right into it. Babe, what are we talking about today? Uh, well, I guess the topic is something like frenemy, friendly, or envy. Something it's like getting, that. What about your friends? What about your friends? Well, okay. that was kind of the topic last time, but this one's more concentrated on, like, you know, working with your friends. Are your friends your frenemies? Are they your frenemies? Are they? Or, or are, they are they working in competition with you? Ooh. Or are they working with you? Uh oh. And so I think uh, that's a great topic. What do you think about that? I think in, in your industry and having the same profession with uh, singers alike, um, how is that? That sounds like uh, you, you have had a couple frenemies, perhaps. Not until I moved to Atlanta. Not to, oh, okay. I'm well, sorry, I think share, that's an Atlanta thing. I'm not even gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. And you know, a lot of people be like standing up for their city. Uh uh, not in Atlanta, not in Atlanta, not in Atlanta. But I think it's very weird. Mm. You know what I mean? And although it's weird everywhere and people are envious everywhere, I just find that the the frenemy relationship is is real strong here. And I didn't really notice how bad it was until I was going back and forth from LA to Atlanta before I ultimately, you know, moved here. Because the truth is, you know, everybody has their clicks, you know what I mean? Every city, you know what I mean? Everybody right. but more you know, you find more cities like more cliquish. You know what I mean? Like everybody say like LA's like got a bunch of cliques, but I, I, I didn't find that. You know? <laughs> Maybe because you were people are very friends. friendly, very oh. nice, and you know, um, I guess my circle of friends were very successful actresses and singers, and okay. you know, people who you know stats are way higher than mine. You know, I felt like I was on my way. I felt like I've digressed a lot here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of my friends in, L in, in L.A. have Oscars and, and multiple Emmys, and we always cheered each other, Grammys, and cheered each other on. It was never like, eh, but, 
We ain't opening up. I mean, we ain't opening up for nobody. We ain't, like, it, they, it never gave that. Okay. So that's why I kind of took it that hard. Like, yeah. well, damn. Like, who cares? It's 2024. Like, yeah. you, people don't even sell out places by themselves unless you're Beyonce or Taylor Swift. <laughs> what? Do you think it's um, because people are afraid that you'll take away their shine? So there, it's like you can support their shine or, or their... Or people be fake supporting here. Mm. That's what I find. Mm. And that's what makes me feel like a, a lot of people... Why are you looking at me like that? It's true. It's because the truth is, it's at, at one point in time, everybody would be cool. And then the next second, as soon as you turn your back, they're talking, talking about you behind your back. I have witnessed that here. And I was flabbergasted. I couldn't believe it. Like you think like like by watching people like on social media, everybody is like all cool and fine and Danny and yeah, we down for the get down and I support this and I'm here for that, that and the other and the third and they really don't like your ass. Mm. They they want you to do good, but they don't want you to do as good as them. Those are the worst people. The, the worst. People. worst. Like I, I can appreciate somebody who just comes out and says, you know, I just don't mess with that person. Yeah. Or, I, or I don't, you know, I'm not comfortable around that person. That person's not my vibe or I just... For whatever reason, I don't get along with that person. I can respect that. I can respect the I, truth. I completely respect people like that. Don't be around me, uplift me, support me, pretend to support me, and then secretly you're either you like envious, me. you don't like me, or as soon as you got an opportunity, you're going to cut my legs out from underneath me. Or you're me. trying to take what I got. Or, or you're trying to take what I got, thinking that what you're going to take is going to affect me. But the truth is, where we come from... We got it out of the mud. We created it ourselves. And even if we have to do it on our own, we will replace it 10 but times But here's over. the thing. It's not about we. It's about the Holy Ghost and what he got for you. What is for that's you right. won't miss you. That's you know what I'm saying? And that's what people don't realize. You know what I mean? People think they're taking from you and setting you back. It really is a setup. <laughs> but for True. God to bless you even more True. because the word says he will bless you in front of your enemies. Mm -hmm. And as long as you pray for that, as long as you remind the Holy Ghost, this is what you said, Father. And so this is, this is my birthright. This belongs to me. That's what he's going to do for you. So the truth of the matter is, you're not taking nothing from me. So, you know, when people be um, trying to throw salt on my name or act like, this was funny to me. I had one person one time was like, oh, well, you know, I want to book Tamar, but she don't sell tickets. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Because I, you ever been to a concert that wasn't sold out of mine? <laughs> No, I'm dead ass. Never been there. And, and and that you never will, thank you, Lord. Okay? Because, you know, people do stuff like that so you'll stop getting opportunities. Mm. They want to stop you in your tracks. And then the truth is they really want you to, they really want to throw you off your game so you won't be as sharp, so you won't be as ready, so you won't be as popular, so you won't be as confident. That's That's the real reason why people do things. You know, because people do, people do see your light shining bright and people be upset about, you know, your aura, like you gave it to yourself. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like people be want, upset. They want your light. They, they want, want your, your light. They want your aura, but they don't realize by trying to cut your legs out from under you, they are affecting their karma. They're affecting yeah, their Yeah, because the truth is the world didn't give it to you, so the world can't take it away. Mm. And that's really how it goes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know? And so why why you why are you rocking back and forth, baby? Has no, anything I, like this happened to you? I, you know, it's you know, I think we all go through that. I think we all think that people are genuine. Uh, you meet them. The way I'm raised is if I meet you, I'll give you enough rope to hang yourself. But I'm always I guess I'm one of those cautiously optimistic people. So I give you an opportunity until you cross me. When you cross me, then I realize who you truly are. But when you pour into people that you think are your friends and then you find out they're not, it's the worst feeling ever because it's like, shit, I have more respect for my enemies than I do for somebody who claims to be a friend. Because they said were honest about how they felt about you. Yeah, at least yeah. they were honest and at least I know how far to keep them away from me. But people who get into your inner circle and then all of a sudden uh, either lie on you, which is the worst thing ever, which I know you know all about. Oh, that. baby. Um, and or. Um, oh, that's the worst. Or spread false rumors about or you, fake things about you that aren't true because, you know, when it comes to receipts, I think we do a good job of having receipts. We do. Because I keep receipts. <laughs> yes. We all. Keep as we receipts. should. So we're getting back to the question. I think, um, I, I think it's. 
it's tough to work with friends, especially in the same profession, um, if you don't think that they truly respect you and your place in the profession, because they may try to take food out of your, your mouth or take money out of your pocket by taking those steps. Go ahead. That's when they broke. Mm. That's when you know it's a sure sign of when somebody is losing. Because mm. when you win it, you're too busy winning. To be focusing to on To be something. focusing on that. Wow. So to be focusing on wow. what somebody else got. <laughs> did that bless you? You better let that bless you. It did, it did. You better let it that did. bless you. It did. When people are struggling, they want to see other people struggling. But when people are winning, when, are they, when they're truly winning, they want to see other people winning. Mm -hmm. And that's how that works. I ain't make that up. Uh -oh. You better preach. <laughs> but it's things. the truth. We're going to pass around the collection. You know what I'm saying? You out here. Not, I'm not going to. Y'all can be mad at me. And y'all can RIP to my ads if you want to. But <laughs> Atlanta is the captain capital of the world. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. And I, I've been in LA. Maybe real fly. Baby, real fly, real cool. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Living above the means of life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and, it, and every month it don't add up. Now you you back. You look back at six months, eight months, nine months, two years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to keep up with somebody or people who are really truly not in your league, or you missed your mark, and you gotta accept where you are in your life. I would always say that loyalty to me is more important than money. And when you choose money over loyalty, it's like determining that you don't truly care about somebody as your friend. And I think that's the biggest part in the overall scope of working with somebody in your industry, because if they choose money over their friendship, over your friendship, then there is no loyalty. And so I think that's kind of the roundabout purpose of what we're discussing is like people choose other things everything else but loyalty because if you have a true friend a true friend won't ever cross you for money for, for other people for anything yeah. that's true you know i think that um people become obsessed with money because people don't don't really truly know how money works mm. the truth is money is a spirit <laughs> okay the bible speaks about money you know, and you, and when you don't treat it as it is, that's when, when you have a lack of, <laughs> okay. you understand what I'm saying? So you can't treat money as if it is a God or that is something that you are trying to obtain. No, you obtain your goal, you obtain your dream and those things come. But when you chase them after money, that's something you will never be able to obtain because it's unobtainable because it is a spirit and not a thing. <laughs> okay? Okay. Taking notes. Mental it's notes. the truth. Okay, so let's talk about nowadays, 2024. Okay. 2024? Okay. 2020. In the 2024? 2023. 2023. Well, <laughs> 2023, 2024, <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. You will probably, if a person makes a million dollars, let's just say a million dollars. Okay. You'll probably never physically see it. You'll see it in the numbers. Okay. Like nobody's gonna open up right. a briefcase right. and and see a million dollars. But you'll see it in the number, right? How do you see the Holy Ghost? You open it up a briefcase. Do you see the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. there? No, but it's a spirit. You know that it exists. For sure. For sure. So money is the same thing. You're not, you're not going to have it in your hand. You got to respect it. You got to treat it. <laughs> the right way. You about to catch it. You about to get sick. No, no, no. I'm listening. I'm listening. You do. And the minute, it's like the Holy Ghost. You know, the Bible gives you a blueprint of how you are supposed to treat the Holy Ghost. There was no gods before me. Well, you put money before. You, I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, your days are not going to be long. And then number two, your money game ain't going to be long. Because mm. that's what mm. the Bible says. I mm. ain't say, Tamar didn't say that. 
Days aren't gonna be long. No, that's wow. the that's what the words that's say. Right there, that's deep. That was the words say. Okay. Y'all on their mother and father too, but I that's nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what I'm saying is because you because you never see it is the proof that it is a spirit. It exists, but it's not physically there. Isn't that what the definition is? It's a great analogy. I I, I like the I like it. So therefore, you gotta abide by the rules of it. You can't praise it. You can't want it so much that you sell your soul for it. And, and, and people are like, say your soul. I'm not doing no richer. I don't worship the devil. Well, selling your soul is selling your friends out. Not having standards. Putting your kids on the line. <laughs> choosing, choosing money over the things that really, truly matter. That's what selling your soul means. Why you keep looking at me like that? I'm right? listening. I'm paying attention. This is uh, we we went to church on this one. I wasn't even trying to go to church. Like my my relationship yeah. with money changed like 20 years ago because you know I thought that I wanted it, but it wasn't money. It was the things that money bought. And the truth is, you can have those things without actually having. I'm about to tear the sheet right off this house. <laughs> you can have those things without actually obtaining the spirit of money. Okay. Y'all better come on with it. Okay. Okay. So you gotta be careful of who and what you're choosing and how you treat people behind the spirit of money. Because mm -hmm. when you treat people jacked up behind the spirit of money, you'll never be able to hold on to it. Hmm. You might have it for the moment, but it don't <laughs> belong to you. <laughs> and it don't belong to you because it don't belong to none of us. Money don't have a name attached to it. We spent a lot of time there. A lot of time there. Well, because, you know, I think that it's a um, misconception of when people have money. Because people think that it defines them. And it doesn't. Hmm. Your character does. Facts. I agree and with that. And that you can't buy. I agree with that. Okay, Facts. go ahead, baby. You want to get back on no, track? No, I don't. I, I, don't uh, I think we've exhausted. I got a little whining and buying them on, y'all. We, we've dove into that topic pretty deeply. Um... I'm not sure. What else do you have to add on? Well, only reason why I said it because I've, I've seen the best friendships crumble over greed. Mm. You okay. know? Okay. And I've seen marriages fall apart. I've seen childhood friends not be friends anymore. Mm -hmm. I've seen people be murdered over money and I think that the root of having a frenemy is envy. What babe? People want to be where you are. People, people want to be where you are. They don't even really know. They don't know. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. They don't know. Yeah. You could be fly as hell. Right? Mm -hmm. But TJ Maxx make you fly. <laughs> You don't know how people budgeting and moving and shaking. Yeah, well, I think people also don't see the blood, sweat, and tears that people you put into something. People don't see. They just they just see the fruits of your labor. They see the the flash and all of that. You know, I, I said a long time ago, whether I'm dressed in my law firm apparel, which I'm I love, by the way, over. and that will be available soon. Because I'm telling you, I tell my baby, I'm like, baby, he don't want to do it, and I'm like, listen, Jay. If I'm not like dressed in fashion over, over, and I call it work clothes, which is designer clothes, because I don't spend my money like that, and he'll tell you that I don't play that. But I am in the JR Law Group clothes, not because oh, I am a walking commercial I and I do anything for my man, but because it's comfortable as hell. <laughs> and I love, listen, I love me a short set, a matching set, girl. Okay, okay, go back to it, go back to it. Um, I just mean that the material <laughs> things, the all of the possessions mean nothing. I mean, at the end of the day, what you did, the foundation, the work ethic, everything behind it uh, was important. And people don't get to see what you did to get there. They only see the results of it. And so their envy is not for the hard work. They want the output without the input. Mm -hmm. You caught that? They want the output without the input. Yes, Pastor. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I I hate that um, envy comes to that level. Like we all look up to people. We all look up to certain things and say, you know, I'd like to be where this person is. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I know enough about a person, I'm like, wow, this might make a great mentor. This person might be somebody um, who I can learn from or I can aspire to be. 
And, you know, I think you see the output, but you don't realize the input. And the fact that, you know, people want that and they'll do anything to get it, it's just, you know, sad. But you know, especially makes, friends. Yeah, you know, it makes me sad when people take their positions for granted. When mm. people actually look up to you mm. and they don't want to be you, but they're inspired by your hard work. They're inspired about, you know, who you are and how you carry yourself. And, you know, some people are, are really hurting. Some people are really broken. And once they set their eyes on someone who is helpful to their spirit and, and, and they see them as, you know, a chance for them to gain to a higher level in life and even self-esteem wise, and that person betrays them, I think that it's a special place in hell for them. Oh, wow. Well, it is. It is. I e a pastor. Oh, well, I e yeah, a counselor. Yeah, and that's, that's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? You gotta, yeah. you gotta be responsible yeah. with fair. the position you choose that's to take fair. on. That's fair. Yeah, because God is real and He's not playing. He don't play about certain people. And <laughs> I don't I'm know how this whole this whole thing. Because I'm gonna tell you church. right here, right now, God we, don't play about me. He's taking it real personal. You play up in my face like that. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But baby, it's coming around. And when that table turns. It is mm. with spikes and stones, cause he don't play that. He don't like that. So we're gonna bring this back to something because fun. Because God look at your heart, and that's what something the Bible says. Something fun. I appreciate all the God and all the church that we're putting into this. We need to bring this back to something okay, fun, because we're getting very churchy, and and I think we're losing the, well, because, the message. Well, here was the thing. We're you know, the message. I, I don't think we're losing the message. I think that is a hard conversation to have. I think because the responsibility of both sides. Number one, you don't put yep. your trust in no man like that. You see somebody who you are fond of, who you like, and, and that's fine and dandy, but you can't put people on a pedestal. It could be a pastor, it could be a, a counselor, it could be a teacher, it, it could be your mama, your daddy, your uncle, somebody. You don't put them on a pedestal. The only person who is equipped to be on a pedestal is the Holy Ghost and God himself. That's it. And so that's the accountability. So the second they let you down, because man is made of flesh, Man or woman, it's a flesh. And the second they, they, they let you down, you upset with that person. Well, nobody told you to put them on a pedestal. Nobody told you to, sit them, to put them in such a high regard that you, that you thought that they were better than you because the only person who's better than you is God. And you better get a hold of that. I'm sorry. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm sorry it's in my blood. Mm -mm. No, I'm sorry, it's the truth. On. It's, okay. it's the truth. It's the truth. Although that person do you wrong, although it's real jacked up and real slimy and slither and real snake-like, it's not their fault. They made it. And they're not equipped to be at the high regard that, they, that you held them to. It's your fault. Accountability, number one. What's number two, man? Yeah, no, I, I, we're talking about friends and where things go and then... You yeah, we hold our friends, friends at high regards. You yeah. got to hold yourself yeah. accountable because anybody is capable of breaking your heart. Anybody but God. Anybody. So you got to put people in perspective. You got to put... You got... You know how we, com we compartmentalize things so well, you and I. Mm -hmm. We so good at it. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. You gotta, you gotta keep them in a compartment. You gotta keep them away. You gotta keep them away. You can't, you can't put everybody in your bosom. Hmm. Deep. We went deep. Went deep. Because that's how they hurt you. And they be knowing they there. You know what I'm saying? And they be using your vulnerability and your love and your trust and your kindness to hurt you. And that's why you gotta be careful. You can't let them come close. Everybody's here. Only here is the Holy Ghost. Even your children. Even your man. Even your wife. No, that's not available. I'm going to love you. I'm going to respect you. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to show up for you. But you're not here because my heart belongs to God. So you here. Because can't nobody hurt me like that. And that's how, how that go. How long do you hold on to friends that have crossed you? Oh, no. I'm a Pisces. R.I.P. <laughs> Baby, R.I.P. to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's giving. I, I don't even know. And, and the truth is, I lose no sleep. They just dissipate in thin air. 
because I've learned so much, you know, and I, you're not going to get close to my heart like that. It's, it's too valuable. You know what I mean? And, and your heart is attached to your mental health. You know what I mean? And I can't, I got too much going on. I got children to live for. I got a, a man to live for. I have a career that I love and cherish. And I have people who, you know, bank on my career being successful so they can feed their kids and, and, and take their kids to college and things like that. So I don't have that kind of time. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, I made the decision that, I, you know, I have to love me and put me first. It's me and God and then. Amen. Amen. Well, that was great. <laughs> well, what happens? I just want to do one note because this is a good question. What happens when your friends, right, are around you and they always got to be the center of attention? How do you handle that? What do you say? Do you call them up and be like, bro, that ain't it? Do guys do that? Because girls do that. Of course guys do that. It's um, Guys do that? Yeah. I what think is that conversation like? Everybody does that. Like, it's always something that we talk about as females. Like, oh my God, girl, you doing too much. You, you got to pipe down. You got to calm down. I had no idea that guys talk to each other about them doing way too much. What is that conversation like? I mean, it just depends on uh, the situation. It depends on, you know, if, um, <laughs> if, if people are getting drunk or people are doing the most to get somebody's attention or they're doing things. They're too old to be doing, you know, you got to have a conversation like with somebody. What? Yeah, so, uh, you know, guys sometimes do want to be the center of attention. They do the most. And if you really think that you're, they're your friend, then you should pull them aside. Hey, man, what's going on? You know, you okay? I, I think you're doing a little bit too too much or a little extra right now. And so I'm, I'm concerned about you first and foremost. Um, I don't know that I've ever had to do it a lot. There have been many times where I've wanted to, but sometimes you look at people and you just say, you know what, live your life, do you. And if you know, <laughs> you wanna be a rapper at 60, 70 years old, or you wanna do things and, and be extra, then just do you. Um, but no shade to them, if they're living their life, let them live their life. But yeah, they do do the most. There are men that do the most. Do they get upset with you? Or when not you as a person, but meaning like the guy group who is like, dog, you doing a lot. Like you gotta pipe down a lot. I've never had anybody say it to me. No. No, not you. I'm saying. When you say it to them, yeah, do yeah, they yeah, get yeah, mad? yeah, yeah. Because girls, I mean, girls be upset. Your delivery is the key, obviously, but you know that ego kicks in. Maybe they are got a little testosterone going. Maybe then it turns into something. But usually, it's not like that. I, I've never had something like that happen. Because mm -hmm. if people respect you or trust you, then they don't they don't approach you. Like well, that. when that happens in the female world, we just disassociate ourselves. Okay. You know, because it's given very much you are known by the company you keep. Mm. And, you know, you don't want to be around people who is like doing way too much, falling out, drunk, can't, you know, you know, like running over a bunch of dudes or, you know, like you don't want to be around that. If you don't want to be you know, labeled or pegged to something, yeah, I've, I've disassociated myself several times. Mm. Females do that all the time. I know guys do that, that's crazy to me. Well, yeah. you learn something new every day. You do, and you got, you got friends who end up becoming frenemies, and uh, we learned a lot today through God and everything else, and so uh, what a great topic. I'm glad we got through it. Um, what do you think? I think that um, it was necessary and I think that um, at the end of the day, it really all boils down to self-love, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, you know, when you really truly love yourself, you don't let a lot of things slide, you know? And I think that, you know, you kind of have to let, love yourself more than the company that you keep. You, you can't like want to be a part of a friend group or a circle so much that you are not in tune with what matters and that is, you know, what truly honestly speak, feel, feeds your spirit and that is your inner spirit. Amen, 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 and amen. Well, thank y'all so much for joining us. 
this week on our episode where we talked about friends who become frenemies. What about your friends? Who were already not really friends. Right. They were just frenemies. disguising um, either envy or um, could only deal with your glow up or your uh, energy for so long before their true colors expose themselves. But as long as you keep doing what you're supposed to do, your light will never diminish. Purr. Purr. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us this week. We really, really appreciate you. We will see you next time. See you next week. Bye. Peace.